a 5 p.m. start time for open session, which is the board work session. Uh, item 2.01, which is the board work session. Um, this would be, excuse me, budget, budget work session. Um, this is information only, Doc? Information only. All right. Um, and the parliamentarian, do we need to adopt this agenda? The one for the board work session? Just, just for the work session. Just for the work session, correct? Yeah. All right. Um, the item is 2.01, budget work session presented by Ms. Bean. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt this as our agenda for the 5 p.m. start time? Move to uh, adopt the agenda for the 5 p.m. open session, budget work session. Second. Uh, it's been moved by Commissioner Devine, second mm -hmm. by Commissioner Harris. Question or discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item 2.01, Ms. Bean. All right, thank you, Ms. Sherry. Matthew Hazel. Board Chair, Board Members, Dr. Witherspoon. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. This evening, Ms. Sierra, being our budget director, will present our 24-25 budget. We wanted to let you know that this budget is based on prelim preliminary projections from the state, um, which is the house version. Our county revenues are based on last year because we're still waiting for this year value of the meal. So we know that would change slightly. Ms. Bean will provide an overview of the budget process and also highlight the current year budget, as well as um, present you with the administration needs and mandates for 24-25. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Bean. Ms. Bean, before you begin to engage, I do just want to make sure we state for the public record that we are uh, located at uh, 1616 Richland Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201. Uh, and today's date is April 23rd. Um, we do want to make sure that everyone is informed that uh, pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act for you, all persons, organizations, media outlets, and requested, um, as requested, have been notified of the time, date, place, and agenda of this meeting. Okay, just want to make sure I inform the public of that. Sorry that is uh, not stated uh, right before, but uh, this is definitely something that I want to be included in this meeting and in the public record. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners, Dr. Witherspoon. This afternoon, I'm going to present a budget work session to you guys and go over some preliminary numbers as Ms. Matthews Hazel previously said. Um, you guys have been provided a presentation and I will be moving forward. So some of our budget challenges for fiscal year 25, we have our state and local funding, our teacher salaries, the mandates that we receive by state and federal, and this year in September, ESSER funds will be expiring. Here is an overview of where we've been operating our general fund budget for fiscal year 22, $345 million. Fiscal year 23, $358 million. And fiscal year 24, $384 million budget. So before you, there is an outline of our former state education funding program. Um, prior to fiscal year 23, our state was operating off of base student costs. Um, base student cost funding was based on a level of $2,516 per child, and the funding should have been at $3,140. In fiscal year 23, the General Assembly voted to revamp the funding formula and make it an equal opportunity amongst all of our public school districts and our charter school districts. Funding is now based upon a target student-teacher ratio of 11.2, 
There has been conversations in the House and Senate to increase, but as of now, it is still remaining at 11.2. And an average teacher salary for a master's teacher with 12 years of experience of $72,000. The current funding formula also made changes to our weightings and our educational finance act and our proviso 1.3, which is our EIA funds. Our next slide, I'm going to show you a chart of how our base student cost prior to our funding formula change was structured across the state. So before you, you can see that in fiscal year 22, as I previously said, we were being funded at $2,516. At that time, as you can see, Looking back in 2009, we were receiving more money in 2009 for base student costs with $2,578. As our expenses of our economy has fluctuated, you can see that our amount decreased. So that's a clear comparison of we were receiving less dollars with a higher eco economic rate. Here are some details concerning our new funding formula. As I mentioned before, we're currently at 11.2 student teacher ratio, and that's an average cost of teacher with fringes about 72,000, and the proportionate share of our weighted pupil units, and then our state and local split, and our ITA, which is index taxpayers' ability. The state also has a hold harmless formula. Although Richland One does not qualify for hold harmless, those districts that did not get the funding in fiscal year 23 with the new funding formula change, they were able to stay at that current state level of funding. So they was continuing to receive that fiscal year 22 rate, even if their allocation decreased in fiscal year 23. Additional proportionate share that's allocated based on each district's proportionate share of the weighted pupil units funding available and in that portion of the formula. So this year with the new funding formula, they basically put all districts within the state in one bucket and gave us our weighted pupil unit share based off of everyone and every child in the state that qualifies for state funding. Also, our funding for our career centers and our special schools was also omitted in that process. So once they rolled those funds up into our general fund, the extra funding that we was receiving for those career centers and special schools, we no longer receive that extra pot. So before you is how we have spent based on instruction in fiscal year 23. So we have 81.7%, I believe that's seven, I'm sorry, 81.27% in instruction 2.44% in leadership, 16% in operations, and other commitments is a 0.26%. To give you an overview of what is in those categories, instruction includes your teachers, your TAs, your uh, guidance counselors, your media specialists, basically those positions that are at a school. And then you have your leadership, which is your principals, your assistant principals, your superintendent, your board. Those are in the leadership category. Operations is your maintenance and your business services, your um, facilities, your um, operations as a whole. And then your other commitments is your capital and your debt, pro debt service funds that we have. So in fiscal year 23, this slide is showing how we have spent our funds, and this was reported to our state. We are required to report this to the State Department each year. It will be posted on the Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Board, but it's in more detail. So this information has been provided to the state, and we are at the average range of any traditional district where the biggest part of our funds is salary and fringes across the board. And so we're looking at 84% for salary and fringes for fiscal year 23. And then we had 9% in purchase services, 5% in our supplies, and 1% in our equipment and other. So 
So let's talk about Act 388. Act 388 was passed in 2006. And prior to Act 388, all owner-occupied homes were taxed for all jurisdictions, which means they received a operating tax based on the school district on their home. After Act 388 passed, that tax was eliminated off of all votes for a single home occupied house. So if this is your primary residence and you do not have a second property, your primary residence is not taxed. However, your second property is. Moving forward, if before you is a chart of all of our districts within the Midlands and our current millage. Right now, Richland 1 is number two across the Midlands with the lowest millage of 330.5 in millage. And that's 266.5 in operating and 64 in debt service. And we have not had a millage increase over the past four plus years. So this is what we've been operating for four years throughout COVID plus. Some adjustments that we've made for fiscal year 24, as required by the state, we gave our teachers a step and then we had a four and a half percent increase on top of that. Um, we provided our classified staff with a step and a 3% increase. We were required to do, to do the bus driver increase of 25%, and that was 25% based off of the state bus driver salary scale. Um, and then we had a paid parental leave that was provided for all employees across the district. That was a requirement mandated by the state. It was not funded by the state, so we had to provide the funding for that piece. And then we also had a 4.5% in health benefits increase for the employer and a 1% increase in requirement contributions for the employer. Other adjustments that we made, we took in those career specialists and those nurses that were no longer funded out of special revenue in EIA, and we reallocated those 22.88 FTEs into our general fund. We also reduced our travel from general fund, although recently we did come back to ask for an increase out of our set aside fund balance. Um, we suspended up part of our technology allocation. We were operating at a three mil, we cut that in half, and then we are continuing with our Snyder energy costs and our savings project that we have running with our energy department. So let's talk about fiscal year 25. For priorities for fiscal year 25, we're looking at the increases for our teacher salaries. If you have been watching our House Legislative and our Senate, they have done a major revamp to our teacher salary scale. So now we are doing our calculations on our side to ensure that we are meeting the minimum of the teacher's salary scale that they have pushed forward. Um, and then we also have our ESSER sustainability. As I mentioned earlier, ESSER is going away in September. So that was a bigger piece and I'll in elaborate on that later on in the pre presentation. Some early budget information we have from the legislature. And please keep in mind that this was preliminary. This was first set that went out to the public. Um, they are continuing to make adjustments as they go through the legislature. So our in increase for teachers was and or 1500 per teacher. Uh, increase for bus drivers up to a 2500 retention bonus. And they have put that out to be increments of three and then an increase of our health insurance to the employer. And our Richland One budget process will continue. We have done our requests. Our departments have submitted their requests into our budget um, in February, and each department was to justify all of their amounts for their requests. Each school receive an allocation of their staff and component budget based on their population. 
Everything above also still has to be justified. Each department also had to ju justify their full-time FTEs and all component budget amounts that they were requesting as an increase or decrease. And although the sessions is over, we did conduct three sessions in February at our schools for our public. Um, it was open to everyone. So we had one at St. Andrews, one at Alcorn Middle, and one at Southeast Middle in February. And we continue to do this process each year. We always have our three input sessions open to the public in the afternoon to make it available so that people can get off and attend and provide whatever input they need or whatever questions they may have. Additional information for fiscal year 2025. So as for sustainability, we're looking at $10 million in as for sustainability, and that's to continue the programs that we have implemented over time. Um, again, as for funding ends in September. And another item that we know for sure, our city has notified us that they will not be renewing the crossing guard MOU. And so we're, we're looking at outsourcing those crossing guards for our city and uh, the current budget for that is $385,000. Additional house budget information. As I mentioned earlier, they're doing a major revamp to the teacher salary scale. So we're looking at an increase to the starting teacher salary to $47,000. Currently, it is $42,000. For purposes of employee compensation, our school bus drivers are state employees. So they are in line to receive an increase, and this is the House number of 1.5%. The Senate has pushed forward a percentage of 2.75. However, we operate in our budget off of the House numbers as Senate projections haven't fully been released. I wanted to provide you guys a sample of the recommended teacher salary scale so that you can see it. So that is our next slide. As you can see, this is years zero through 10 and where it stands for a bachelor's, bachelor's plus 18, master's, master's plus 30, and a doctorate. So they're doing major changes across the board for our teacher salary scale. So the point of the increase to the teacher salary scale from what legislators is pulling out, the approach is to bring in more teachers within the state of South Carolina. They want to make it so that it is advertised to make it a more economic standing salary for a teacher coming in. So they're pushing to increase the outcome. They're looking at going up to 50, 55. Um, but right now, they're starting in increments. So I would not be surprised if next year we may go up an increment again. Um, but just to give you an idea of where we stand, this is Richland 1 versus our state salary sales. And this is the recommended. So currently, all of these steps are on a step zero basis. So if a teacher come in at Richland 1, currently, we're looking at a 43 thousand dollar salary however the house is proposing a forty seven thousand dollar salary for a new incoming teacher with zero years and that is a difference of three thousand three hundred and sixty dollars so we're going to have to take in that difference and look at it across the board and as you can see we're going to have to increase our scale across the board for each category it's bachelor's bachelor's plus 18 masters masters plus 30 and doctorate but what you will notice is the increases isn't as impactful as you go up the scale. So they're pushing it forward to those bachelors and bachelors 18 to provide them more money. But as you get to your master's and your doctorate, it is less of an increase to the salary scale. So let's talk about our proposed salary e increases as of now. Mandated teacher salary increase with a step. We're looking to meet the minimum teacher salary scale that was presented before you, 7.3 million. Um, mandated bus driver increase, this is off of the house. We're looking at 589,000. And a non-teacher salary increase with a step, we're looking at 5 million.
each, as I pre presented earlier, our departments were able to put in requests for new program and new personnel. So before you are the items that were presented as new program, new personnel requests. Um, Thrive Richland is currently functioning off a grant. That grant is ending this year. Carryover is no longer available. So we will have to continue to keep that program. Um, we're looking at increasing our social workers, six FTEs, um, athletic trainers. We're, currently we have a Prisma contract with our athletic trainers. And so it has been proposed to end that contract but bring in those trainers, and that will be a salary increase. Um, a healthy learners, we have a contract with healthy learners currently in ESSER that we're functioning with. Um, we have a request for an IT business support analyst at 96,000, a retention of records program at 50,000, and our early learning center two FTEs, the principal and secretary at 256. So as I mentioned earlier, I was going to talk about our ESSER sustainability and give you an idea of where we stand with ESSER. Richland One received $121 million since 2020 in ESSER funding. Um, in December, we went through an ESSER audit and we received notification from the State Department of a clean desk audit and appreciation of our great and wonderful programs that we've implemented to prevent, prepare, prepare for and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. So that letter was provided to us in January and, and we do have it. Um, and kudos to our district for spending our plan as in our new programs that we've implemented over the time frame. ESSER sustainability. Now, these are items that are currently in our ESSER plan. As I mentioned earlier, again, these items are now at the point where our funding is no longer as of September 30th. So the ESSER interventionists, we're looking at a $5 million increase. Summer Learning Academy is $1.7 million. Secondary Summer Program is $1.5 million. Credit remediation program is $1.6 million. Again, Healthy Learners is in our ESSER. Summer SOAR, which is $950,000. And our elementary virtual is $191,000. Lastly, this is our slide concerning our county. Now, we have received the numbers for fiscal year 25. Um, no meal increase. We are looking at $269 million. For a meal cap increase, we're looking at $276 million. Um, our recommendation today is to go forward with the cap. And that is the end of my presentation, but I am open for questions. And I have individuals here if you guys have any questions about new program, new personnel requests. Thank you for the presentation at this time, board. Are there any questions? Okay, Commissioner Devine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Bing, for this um, report that you presented to us. And again, this is just a budget work session, we know each year that you all present to us a needs-based budget, and we want to make sure that, that this we continue with the needs-based budget and zero-based budget, so thank you for, for that. Just a few questions, and I'm not sure if this goes to you or if this goes to uh, Dr. Witherspoon. I tend to ask these questions every year uh, just to make sure that we um, continue on the same accord. The first question I have is, are our school and administrative goals aligned with the district strategic plan as it pertains to the general fund budget? Yes, and also in keeping with the, the um, proposed strategic plan um, later on this, this evening as well. Very good. And then we looked at the proposed salaries, and of course we know it's still in the House and in the Senate and or the legislature as to where uh, we're gonna be, but we know approximately where we're gonna be. Do we know where we are in comparison to our neighboring districts? Somewhere above, and Ms. Bing, I don't know if we can answer, somewhere a, a higher than 
uh, some were not depending on starting and, and what happens in every cell at, at every level. I do know it's going to be a, a, a challenge for us as well as others with what's, man, what's being mandated, that big increase, mm -hmm. and, and how we move forward with that. And that's something that uh, I, I know our finance folks and I have as, as well, uh, talking with some other districts to see what they're planning on, and some are pretty coy about that right now. Right. Understood. Understood. No, no, no issues. Again, this is just a workshop. So sure. this is not the first reading, second reading. So we still got time. And this is just the board's input on into the budget based off the needs of the district. And then lastly, um, and this will probably come in, in the first, second reading, definitely by the third reading. Uh, do we anticipate matching or uh, giving the same amount of percentage increase for non teachers uh, in the district? We are looking at some scenarios now. Um, by first reading, we will uh, have that number uh, for you. Uh, but, but again, trying to look at what, what the numbers are, um, and we're going to base that on, uh, as Ms. Bing said, uh, asking for the cap uh, from the county. Um, and that will have an impact. And just like last year or this current year's budget, depending on that, there may be what's actually funded, if you will, okay. that may have an impact. All right. And then, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is my last question okay. for, for now, and I'll yield to somebody else. As we look at the extra sustainability and that, those funding um, models that we have, um, do we have any data to show the correlation of increased student performance as it pertains to, i.e., interventionalist or the Summer Learning Academy or Summer SOAR to help us ensure that we keep these, these dollars in our budget? Sure. That is something I know we talk with Teaching Learning and AARE about. We have, uh, we, we, of course, will not get data from this current year until the fall, right. which we will have a budget um, um, right. before then. Uh, but that is it's some data and information that we're trying to ascertain either through some of the formative work that we've been doing, but it's hard to pin that on one thing. Right. Uh, we've, we've made some changes to some PLC process, and you're going to get this information in, in an upcoming, another upcoming work okay. session uh, with what's, what we've been doing differently with PLCs and some other instructional um, Things. Some were outlined in, in, in some of the academic presentations we've given you before. Mm -hmm. um, but again, trying to isolate it was because of this. That's difficult. Right. You know, but, I, but we are in, in the process of trying to ascertain that. As I'll share with you in our conversations in, in the committee, um, we heard from several parents through town halls mm -hmm. and other opportunities in the community that some felt that the interventionists were good, the summer SOAR program, mm -hmm. they saw an increase uh, in the academics in their children. So they've asked that we advocate for that going forward. And this is just hearing from parents directly in the community saying that these were good options, opportunities, and experiences for our young people. Sure. And one of the things we are working on in that regard, um, we, we had either full-time or part-time interventionists in elementary. And one of the things that we are, whether the ESSER piece makes it in the, the final budget or not, as we work through this, right. is ensuring that every one of our elementary schools have at least one full-time interventionist. Yeah. That is something that we will be proposing um, uh, as we bring a you know, first reading and so forth to you. I just want to go ahead and let you know that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Any other questions? Commissioner Weston. Weston. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, thank you, Chairperson um, Bishop. Yes. I would like to ask, why is it that the board was not provided with materials to review prior to this meeting? Since it's um, so crucial, our financial decisions are so crucial, but we didn't have any materials to look at prior to this particular meeting? Well, one of the things when we, and we do this, um, this work session, so again, we're asking for feedback. This is not the last time 
uh, we have three readings. So, um, and you do get those readings prior to uh, as well. But as this is a work session, we want to present this information. And some of the information, as Ms. Bing was saying, um, still trying to get the latest information either from what the legislature is proposing, getting some numbers uh, of, 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 of some costs and, and things to, to present here. But this is just feedback uh, and information. So we're not asking for any action. any action this evening. So you have time. Okay. Um, we need an HR pie chart on all positions within um, the district just to know how many positions um, that are filled and how many are still vacant. And if the vacant positions, then how long have they been vacant? And if they've been vacant for years, we're still counting them in that count. So how do we eliminate that? We have in the past eliminated positions. Uh, mm -hmm. Think to the tune, Ms. Matthews Hazel, maybe around a million, two million, somewhere in there. And that's something that we can certainly provide. And if the work, if those positions are eliminated, then how is the work handled? Well, again, if there was a, a particular vacancy, um, depending on the work, if you will, uh, that may have been divided uh, um, amongst other staff, or it just depends on the position and depends on, uh, uh, on those responsibilities and how they're distributed. Okay. If that could be included in that information, it would be helpful for us to see how that works. Um, is the administration keeping in the budget positions that have been vacant for years? Are we keeping that in the budget? Again, we've eliminated positions over the years, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll provide that information. So, so we will be told which ones are eliminated? Yeah, then they're in, in prior presentations such as this or prior readings where they have been eliminated. It would be helpful, at least for me, if I could see it in a graph or a chart so that we could see it side by side and, and, uh, and see what we're doing. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Harris. Uh, I got a co couple of questions about the budget. Um, what is the financial hit to our district? And I know you probably don't have it tonight with the special schools and of course our career school not being covered. Is that going to impact our career programs? We have career programs in all of our schools. So how are they going to be impacted? Do you do we know what that number looks like, being that it's not a part of when we're looking at our base student costs anymore? So we ran some scenarios when we brought forth the fiscal year 24 budget, mm -hmm. and we put a dollar amount with that figure so I can retract and get that information for you. Thank you. Um, and, and I heard you mention us earlier, and I can't remember why, but Richland One was one of the districts that was not held harmless um, when it came to the new funding formula. You, can you share with us why we, we so were? So we had an increase in our funding at that time. When it was presented forward, the state looked at everyone as a whole, and those that did not have a decrease in their fiscal year 22 EIA funding, mm. they were held harmless. Those that had an increase, we was continues to operate with our increase that we had going forward. Okay. So whole harmless is basically saying that if you lost kids, right. then we're still going to fund you at that current level as of fiscal year 22. Okay. On the ESSER funds, um, well, I'll ask that later, because I know you talked about the deadline. Thought it was when we going to be able to spend all that money, or is there any money left? Oh, we're... Yes, sir. We're tracking to, to have it spent down by September 30th. Okay. On some the of pay that's in summer and, you know, with summer sore and, again, some of those things that are built in. So okay. we've got it. And, and there's a plan to have it encumbered and all that, but we're tracking. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. On our paid parental leave, and I know you've already mentioned that the state is not funding that. That's another unfunded mandate for us. Um, what is that dollar amount? It was roughly, and I'm going to double check the number, but I believe it was 700, around right, 760, 780,000 dollars, but I can get you the okay. number. Okay. All right. Um, and you all did input sessions with classified and certified, right? Yes. Okay. We did do okay. 
an input session for both classified and certified in March. Okay, you mentioned crossing guards uh, and that the city is, is, is kind of getting out of that business, so we we're going to be looking for uh, someone to do that for us. Are there any schools outside of the city limit that we do crossing guards for that are already a part of our budget or not? I'm sorry, could you ask? On, on the crossing guards, I know that the city is not renewing that MOU with us, so that's kind of on, on us. Um, are there any schools, because I know a lot of our schools say Columbia, but they're not really in the city of Columbia, so they don't fall under that particular contract. Um, are there schools that we currently have that we're providing crossing guards Well, for? we brought in the county this fiscal year. Right. The county got out of the crossing guard business. Right. So and my the city. Um, right. So my question to you is with the city not doing this and we're about to extend this out to, I guess, an outsourced company is what we're going to have to do. That's what we're checking on. But there are some schools in the district, namely our elementary schools, that have crossing guards. So you're saying county is covering those schools or? Well, they were, but we brought those in-house. We Okay, we brought those in-house. This year. Okay. Current year. And the city. You want to add anything to that, Mr. Grant? This current year, we brought in um, 12 crossing guards that are part of the county program. Okay. And that's, they're kind of intermix with our SSA program. We have some that are just crossing guards, but we have some SSAs that serve in both of those roles. So we picked up 12 of those. The city contract has 14 sites with 18 crossing guards, which is what we're going to be looking for, either finding a, a, a partner to do that or looking at what it would cost if we were to bring those folks in hourly as um, district employees. Okay. I, I'm asking this question because, and I just want to make sure Dr. Witherspoon all of our elementary schools that need crossing guards are covered. Uh, if you recall, we had a student that was hit um, severely, um, and I believe that school did not have a crossing guard. So I'm asking that question just to make sure that, you know, I, I understand we are not going to be uh, using the city uh, MOU agreement or whatever we had with them. But just let's take a, a look at all schools and make sure since we're in the budget, that we cover all schools that need crossing guards because there are a lot of schools, namely elementary, where our students do walk to and from school. And I think it's important that we provide safe passage across the district to all students that may be walkers. Um, you already talked about we asking for the cap. And I think Commissioner Devine asked my question about um, the, 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 the match for the non-teachers. Uh, what is the IT business support analyst? What's, what's that role compared to what we currently have in place? I'm going to call Dr. Kopic up. So Good evening, everyone. So a business analyst, we currently have uh, one of those. A business analyst helps us with the data integration. We have approximately over 83 plus um, instructional applications. There's probably many more than that. But we also have our Munis, Cronus, every other in application that we have in the district. That additional staff member will help us um, seamlessly integrate all of our programs across the district. Um, that's our ID systems. Every program that's in the district, they will assist with um, seamless integration. Okay. All right. And would you be the person to answer the retention of records program? Okay. <laughs> Tag your it. And if you can share with this program, what is different with this from what we currently have? Currently, we have um, our, our record stored at Stone Mountain. Iron Mountain. Mountain. I'm about to say Stone Mountain. Iron Mountain. <laughs> And um, we need to develop a formalized program where we have the retention program in place where we abide by the state retention schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we have had changes in personnel over the years. We know we need to revamp our system um, into a new and improved system. Um, we would like a turnkey. We know that it costs about, we got a quote um, working with um, several consultants, it's going to cost about 200000 But knowing this is a tight budget year, we wanted to break it out into three phases mm -hmm. um, and sort of like train the trainer. So this would be the first $50,000. Um, starting first with the 
departments that have the most records. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Dr. Witherspoon, I was hoping that Ms. Matthew Hazel was going to say that was someone to help with the amount of FOIA requests that are coming in. Um, we are pulling our folk away from their normal duties a whole lot for just, I want to report, I want to see, and, and, and of course we're public schools, we have to be open and all that other stuff, but we are pulling these guys away from their normal responsibilities a whole lot. And I think that is something we've got to invest in. If, if we're, if we're going to play this game, then we've got to spend the money to have somebody there to handle that. Because when you're asking for stuff out of a certain department, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll use procurement since I'm looking over in that direction, how can they effectively run their shop if they are constantly being pulled to find invoices and receipts of this and, and things of that nature? What can we put in place while we're in the budget cycle that helps resolve that issue and that overtaxation of our people? And, 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 and the reason I ask that question is because employees have job, job descriptions. And in those job descriptions, they do have day-to-day -day responsibilities that they have to fulfill. But a lot of times, we're, it's the same departments that's getting hit and they're spending a lot of time, a lot of time in getting their day-to-day -day work done on top of, I want a copy of this and a copy of that and a copy of the other. There have been reports that have taken some of these departments days. Days. And I just think while we're talking about the budget, we need to be able to accommodate our folk if there's additional staff and if there's a new whatever. And I was... I was hoping that's what the retention records program was going to be with somebody that could just help pull that stuff because it's overtaxing our people and that leads to burnout. And you know, you know, there's there's more than one way to to tear down a system. You can overwork people, and I just think that is something we need to consider while we're talking about um, records and retain records and retaining of this stuff. Maybe there's somebody, a clerk or somebody that can handle this directly for us that our folk can continue to run the day-to-day -day operations of the school district. And that's just a thought. Like I said, I was hoping that that's what that person was going to be to help us a little bit, but it's not. But we need to take care of Iron Mountain as well, that, that, that stuff as well, because we've been talking about that for quite some time. Okay? Okay, Ms. Matthew Hazel, coming back to the mic. Right. <laughs> okay. In essence, it will help with those requests. Okay. Because as we destroy those it's old easier. records... We're not going to have to retrieve those records okay. when they are being requested for uh, freedom of information requests. Okay, so a department will be able to go in the system we, and pull this? It will all be automated. You'll be able to pull up the okay. boxes in the system. Okay. And it will have an automatic expiration date when those records expire. You'll be able to see it. Now, as, if you're talking about every, every piece of paper being scanned in um, into the system, you do have some departments that do that as well, but okay. you know we're talking about the physical record that okay. being stored. that we have stored over That's there. That's right, okay. and we're having to when those requests come in, mm -hmm. request those boxes back and provide it for the freedom of information. So it will help in that sense. You know, when they're requesting <coughs> records ten years back, mm -hmm. you know those records no longer have to be kept. We will no longer have to require those once we get. But that this is kept. this is a phase of it. So it this, this is not because. Iron Mountain got a lot of stuff for That's us. Right. That's right. So I, I'm quite sure this fifty thousand dollars is not going to cover all of that. It's not. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the twenty four twenty five school year, and 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 the amount of requests that have been asked for in the twenty three twenty four has been overwhelming. So this is a start to getting us more electronic. Getting us with those there. records. Right. Okay. And if we had the money, we would just put it all there. But we have to we'll do it in and the commence. resources because it's going to take some time. To okay. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Yes. Anyone else? Commissioner Lomanac. Thank you, Chairman Bishop. Uh, just one question about the interventionists that uh, Commissioner Devine was talking about. How is the district going to address the challenge that we're trying to keep? I think it's like 61 uh, ESSER funded interventionists. Um, we're trying to keep the ones we've got and hire folks for a potentially uh, positions that are going to be open, but we don't have the, the money budgeted yet. So in other words, we're going to be sending contracts out soon 
can we send contracts out to the current interventionists or are we having to wait until we're done with the budget process? We had shared um, with you that any folks that are that were in ESSA funded or grant funded positions and they're annually they are given notice that you are in a grant funded position and that position runs out uh, and um, there's a position in the district. It may not be the current position you have. So those individuals, as contracts go out, they will get teacher contracts because interventionists get teacher contracts. But I guess that's, yeah, so what we, we run the risk of losing some of our current interventionists because we don't, we can't ensure that we've got the money budgeted for their current positions for the next year. That is correct. And then if we lose those folks, are we concerned about not being able to hire anybody to replace them because that's generally what happens with teachers. Generally. Well, we're always concerned about recruitment and retention uh, at any time. Um, but what we can't do is say, yes, that position will be there. And we don't know that position is going to be there uh, at this point. So the ESSER funding, it doesn't have to be spent by September, right? Yes, it does. I thought it had to be encumbered. No, it runs out September 30. That's the federal fiscal year. So we have to be down to zero. There can be no spending of ESSER dollars after September. It's not just encumbered. Because earlier you said. Well, encumbered, encumbered. like now, summer, we've got some encumbered. Right. uh, Some of that for summer. Well, that's before September. So there. Yeah, but there was something Ms. Bang didn't come down and said, even with spending, some of that had to be encumbered because we have to send those plans in. Yes. So in terms of what we're going to do. Acts and they sent out an email to all if we would have any capital projects that will overlap past the September deadline. Okay. That's my that is the portion that can be encumbered. However, okay. for salaries, the cutoff is September 30th. So some monies will not, it, we will not be down to zero in ESSER. So the answer to my question is no, we won't be down to zero in ESSER, but the only funds that you can encumber and not spend are capital expenditures. Capital expenditures. So that's actually the mm-hmm. answer, right? So in, there is a difference between encumber and get down to zero. We will not be down to zero in September with ESSER funding, correct? We well, will. we don't have any capital projects that are that are in ESSER. So we so we will not be using the encumbering provision at all. Right, because we don't have any any capital items okay. that, are, that are in. Is there is that any, right, Ms. Ming? That is correct. Yeah. Is there anything we can do to ensure we have funding for the interventionists to avoid potentially losing them. For example, um, I I think we've got close to 200 teacher vacancies now. Can we begin to estimate what we think those teacher vacancies are gonna be in August based on the last several years and convert some of those FTEs into the interventionist funds? Because I just think potentially losing any interventionists and then also still having openings at the beginning of the year is the worst case scenario. One of the things that we looked at this year, uh, going into the fall, we have looked at some, uh, what our class sizes are relative to that. uh, So that even though we still have small class sizes and we'll still continue to do so, so there won't be the number of of, of vacancies and making those adjustments as well. That is something we're looking at as well. And then that would save us money. Yes. That we could use towards the interventionists. That's also depending on what we get from the county and what the what the legislature eventually does. So there's some variables and some unknowns that we just can't answer right now. Well, could we, could, by the next budget meeting, can we get at least um, last year's teacher vacancies and how much money uh, that saved the district at least at the beginning of the year? So we'll at least know potentially what we're looking at, even if we converted a small portion of those to the interventionists. I'm just really I'm really worried that we may lose some interventionists. And those are obviously the folks working with the kids who need that extra support. So when we talk about equity, uh, interventionists are kind of, you know, the 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 line based equity folks at the school sometimes. So I I just worry that we're now in April. Teacher contracts are going to be due in, I guess, three weeks or so. Um, And I'd hate to lose some of those if we can't just work with the the what we know are going to be a lot of vacant FTEs come August and convert those. But I'd appreciate it if we could figure out a way to to try to do that. And that might even be and we will certainly look at that, but that might even be even higher class sizes 
because we base them on on that original number as well. So but that is something we'll certainly take a look at. All right. Commissioner Weston. Thank you, sir. Looking at the teacher salary scale, the years of experience, does it go past 18? It does. Okay, how far much? Um, they have a gap between 26 and 28 plus, um, but if I'm not mistaken, it goes all the way up to 28. Right. It goes all the way up to what? 28. 28. 26, 28. Um, and so it ends at year 28. The state. The state. Do we? We do not. We go beyond 28 to 31. 31. So those who've been teaching more than 31 years don't count in that step. Correct. Correct. Okay. The other question I have is dealing with the new programs, the new personnel request. Um, you said the athletic trainers, eight of them, will end with Prisma contracts. They will be brought on as Richland One employees? Correct. Hourly we, or? FTEs, full-time Full FTEs. Time. Yes. Okay. And are they, because we usually use them during games and other things, I'm asking, will they have full-time positions? Coach do you want to come up and speak on? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The plan that I propose or we're taking forward, we get there's options we can look at. But moving our trainers that we currently have under contract with Prisma to full time would give us more control on what our trainers would do, and and it also allow us. We're losing trainers. For example, I've got one school or two schools this year. They've gone through three trainers this year because trainers are jumping to the full-time positions at other districts. And so trying to keep, usually when a trainer gets into a school where we're paying them, the, the studies nationally is that they'll stay at those schools longer, build those relationships, and give our students better health care um, as far as what they can do as far as the rehab and, and those kinds of things, contact with parents, et cetera. Um, in terms of what you're asking, the the eight the athletic trainers that we'd hire would be full time trainers. They would be based on I think we talked about a 210 day contract, um, and we would work their schedule so that schools would have coverage when they're needed, and they would cover our games, our practices, and all the all the events, um, do the rehab at the schools, those kinds of things. So we wouldn't be losing the service of the trainer. We're actually gaining a member of our staff and, and our family if you want to call it that at each of the high schools um, and so and then we would get extra trainers we could part of the problem that we're having with the shortage of trainers that are occurring is that the grad programs have been uh, are slowly being phased out of the university mm -hmm. and so those trainers are going elsewhere and we use a lot of the grad students to help fill some of the slots and so that's where we're having some of those issues and so to try and get ahead of that, I'm proposing, and, and we're at that discussion now, um, that we end our contract with Prisma, which we just got, you know, we've gone through that process for next year, which if we choose not to do, we'll bring forward. Um, but instead of doing the contract, we would go work with Prisma for grad assistance, but have our full-time trainers on site, on campus, you know, as needed. and. That would help us. Um, now, there are other, you know, like Richland 2 has full-time. They have a hired trainer, but those trainers um, actually teach two classes That's during the day as well. So that is an option. But then when you're looking at that, you're also looking at lengthening that trainer's day. So then do we pay them the supplement or the salary for teaching and give them a stipend for training? Does it cost us more, et cetera, those kinds of things. So those are things that we'd have to look at if that's the option that we choose to do. Okay, thank you, that makes a lot of sense. Um, looking at, and thank you, Coach Metz, Thrive Richland the grant ends this year, and then we have early learning centers, two FTEs. Is there some way to <coughs> combine or cut down with those things? 
depending on, again, as we work through the budget process and we hadn't gotten through first <coughs> reading and so forth, uh, uh, let me just say that might be uh, an, option. An, an option or something we take a look at. Okay. I was just saying that those should be somewhat connected because they're all around the, the same uh, issue. Well, the two, FD, the two the FTEs, FTEs would be tied to a site. site. <laughs> Rather than different rise. than Thrive Richmond, which is is, is a All bit more yeah a bit more comprehensive, okay. but again as we work through through the rest of the budget process, that number may change. Okay, with the Esther Sustainability Plan that we have, um, which of those programs would we possibly have to combine or cut? But again, that would depend upon how we work through the budget process, um, whether any or all or what portion or going back to a, a, a project manager and then we have to come up with plan B, depending again on what the legislature eventually does and what um, the county eventually does. Thank you. Uh, board members, um, please be advised that we do have a start time of 6 p.m for executive session. So uh, if there are any other questions, we want to definitely get those answered so we can definitely come out of this and then go into executive session. Are there any more questions from the board during this work session? Not a question, but a statement. Okay, Commissioner Devine. Not necessarily a question, but a statement. One to follow up with um, Commissioner Weston's um, question regarding those who are more than 31 years of service. While they may not get the step, they will get the cost of living cost increase. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I just want to know if they will get something. I did not just right. not get anything. We tend to, um, they will get that part. So I just want to add that to, to the conversation. That. Yes, ma'am. All right. This does exhaust our um, voted and said agenda for uh, the 5 p.m. open session board work session. Uh, with no other question or discussion. Yes, ma'am. We will be presenting this to the county. We have a deadline mm -hmm. of May 3rd to get our requests in. Of course, we want to be in compliance with the county deadline. So this number of the cap will be going forward to the county. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Dr. Witherspoon? No, sir. All right. Um, the time is now uh, 6.05 p.m. Uh, we do have a 6 p.m. executive session, um, and there are items on our agenda. Uh, is there a motion at this time, as we've already stated, uh, the, pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act, that all persons, organizations, media outlets, as requested, have been notified of the time, date, and place of the agenda of this meeting? I think we need to adjourn the work session. Did you? And you may have. I was working. No, no, so. we didn't. Okay. I didn't. Okay. Without well, objection from well, let me, thank you, uh, parliamentarian. Um, with no objection, we need to adjourn the work session. Right. right. Attorney, is that correct? Uh, with no objection, we now stand adjourn, adjourned from the work session. 6.06 p.m. 6.06 p.m. Right.